I like to think I'm a book. A biography, waiting. Pages yearning for a read. For a reader that yet just listens. To marvel guesses at who I am behind the silliness of complex words. Grasp my meaning when I merely joke. Recognize sincerities with a smile on the lips. Wear me out with back-breaking eagerness. Unfold my corners. Know my habits. All my many thoughts neatly mapped in the complexity of these silly words. Understood in a deafening heartbeat. The turn of a page. Echoed with silent roars of approval. To see me as a person and read me like a book. If only I were a book. A biography cherished on a shelf of fiction. Out of place and silly. Perfect. Can you think of anything better? My brain is taking a collision course of random thoughts. Some trivial, some deeper. One recent observation, though, has started occupying my mind. It's the thought that, no matter where you go, you're almost never alone. I struggle to find a solitary moment anymore. I mean, when was the last time you were alone? And I don't just mean in terms of people in the same room as you. I mean when you were really alone. Away from your other life, away from your electronic life. Away from that prosthetic life we call our social network. I don't want to seem dark here, but sometimes I really long to be alone from everything. The whole lot. I'm not a social recluse, but I think that a bit of solitude is healthy. After a while, I begin to feel overwhelmed with how much time I've spent plugged in, and I need a system reset before I start feeling claustrophobic. One of the annoying things about being human is that we can get swept along in the minutiae of our daily lives, and forget to stop and look at the big picture. We don't see the wood for the trees. Because how often do we completely disconnect? Only when we're asleep can we truly escape for a while. Which is rather sad, don't you think? The worst part isn't that we have to actively try to find time on our own, it's that we just don't. Even though nothing's as good as the real thing, we stay connected. Every now and then I leave my phone at home for a day, and instead of texting people or sending dozens of Snapchats, I talk to people, and I look around. Instead of peering at the screen of my 5 megapixel phone camera, I use my eyes, which together have about 10 million receptors. It's refreshing. It's refreshing not to have to type what I want to say, or decide which emoji best personifies my mood. But we rarely do it. We're comfortable in the electronic lives we've built around ourselves. So comfortable, in fact, that we fear being disconnected from the silicon firmament. It's green, man. Look around. Are we so afraid of switching off? It's as if the internet and smartphones have taken over the world without anyone noticing. And now, living an artificial existence is more appealing than active, physical, real-life social interaction. Now that we have all this communication technology, we have nothing real to say. And we pass through life half-absent, like a childhood memory or an old photograph, invisible and mute. Let's not vanish into our screens. Let's see. Let's be seen. Thank you.